Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and over the past few weeks I've been playing Rangers of Oblivion, an engrossing RPG with a large variety of build options, six unique weapon types, friendship and harvesting systems, and of course, slaying big monsters to harvest for parts. But most importantly, it's all on mobile, and it's all free. During my time on YouTube, I have turned down tens of thousands of dollars each year in potential mobile game sponsorships. I turn them down because honestly, the games just aren't that good, and I wouldn't feel right suggesting them to you. Rangers of Oblivion is the first mobile game sponsorship I have ever taken. I did this because I truly believe in this game, and I genuinely think it's one of the best mobile games I've ever played. Granted, I'm a bit biased because I love games like Monster Hunter, but if you enjoy games like this, then you should definitely check this out. At its core, Rangers of Oblivion is about one thing, hunting and slaying really big monsters. As one would expect, these monsters start off pretty simple, but continuously become more complex and challenging. For example, early on, the poison spewing Croker has a simple move set for what is a pretty straightforward encounter. But later monsters like the Draken start to deploy many different mechanics, like this ability to drag you in with a gust of wind from its wings, or planting crystals that if not broken promptly begin to chain lightning around the battlefield, or this phoenix-like creature that takes to the skies, blast fire attacks, and before death enters a molten egg shell that if not destroyed immediately, will resurrect the creature to fight again. These monsters and many more compose the roster of enemies to conquer in Rangers of Oblivion. But before we really get into the nitty gritty of fighting these monsters, let's briefly discuss the motives behind slaying these great beasts. To start, Rangers of Oblivion takes place in the medieval fantasy world of Malheim. Over the course of centuries across Malheim, large vicious monsters known as behemoths have pushed humanity into pockets of relative isolation, forcing mankind to take refuge behind city walls after being beset on all sides by a mysterious event known as behematides. These tides bring with them two things, a rise of prowling hostile behemoths and fear among the settlements of humanity. To stem the horde of monsters, you play the role of a custom-created behemoth slayer in a cast of warriors known as rangers. These rangers are the only warriors to brave the outside world, as they're the only fighters truly capable of permanently killing a behemoth. The rangers achieve this by absorbing the wild souls of defeated monsters. Now, as a game mechanic, soul absorption goes much deeper than simply acting as a fast means to disintegrate a defeated behemoth for its materials to craft new armor and weapons. Not only must you occasionally meditate to cleanse your own soul as it becomes more and more corrupted with each wild soul absorbed from a behemoth, but you can also sometimes find the wild soul of a god inside of a behemoth and harness its deity power for yourself. My thunder will cleanse this world of sin. After finding and equipping these god souls, each different deity bestows your character with a loadout of varying spells. From deity to deity, these spells range from things like momentarily pausing time to freeze monsters in their tracks, or placing a bubble of invisibility to easily resurrect a downed ally, to life-stealing hits for a time, or dropping a paralyzing trap, and much, much more. There are a lot of different god souls with many different spells, but you can only have one equipped at any given time before departing on a behemoth hunt, so you're going to have extras. Luckily then, when god souls are not equipped for their spells, they can be socketed into armor for stat increases and ability alterations. Further still, some god souls and their associated spells pair better with different weapon types. This is because of the six different unique weapon types of greatsword, lance, bow, twin blades, magic staff, and armored gauntlets. Each weapon type has three skill slots, and each skill slot has four different variations of skills that can occupy that same slot. For example, in addition to normal and charged attacks, one bow skill can be used to hail arrows down from above, or another skill fans out in a wide cone of damage. The lance, on the other hand, can charge for a lot of damage or hold strong with a shield waiting for an incoming attack to counter. 
So between the weapon skills and the different weapons characteristics, some weapons synergize better with different spells. For example, Dual Blades and its Rapid Assault pairs very nicely with the Life Leech spell to refill your health much more quickly than, say, the Great Sword's slower, heavy strikes. But on the other side of the coin, the Time Stop spell complements the Great Sword fantastically by allowing guaranteed successful, fully charged weapon attack skills. So when considering Wild Soul spells, your choice of weapon, the various weapon skills, differing armor stats, and filling armor sockets with various buffs, there really is a wide range of possibilities to create interesting builds for a unique ranger that fits your playstyle. More importantly though than all of the systems of character customization is the question of how does gameplay feel? And I have to say that gameplay feels pretty damn good. I have to confess though that about 90% of the time I spent with Rangers of Oblivion, I was actually using a controller made specifically for Android. And that is definitely how I would personally recommend to play. But that shouldn't imply that it doesn't handle very well without a controller. Even on my old Samsung S6, I was surprised just how well the game performed on mid to high settings. And speaking of phones and differing operating systems, Rangers of Oblivion does have crossplay on mobile devices, meaning I was easily able to play with friends no matter if they were using Android or iOS. To that end, multiplayer is definitely the way to enjoy the game, but Rangers of Oblivion does strongly support solo play with a large cast of companions that can be recruited, equipped, and upgraded to join your battle to slay some behemoths. Now with all of that said though, there are other aspects to Rangers of Oblivion besides slaying behemoths. When you're not hunting though, you're preparing to hunt. Preparation activities include growing and harvesting crops, fishing, scavenging for valuables with treasure maps, taming horses, breeding horses, building friendships and reputation with guilds, and much more. Overall, in the end, Rangers of Oblivion finds a nice gameplay rhythm. That rhythm is preparation to hunt, go on that hunt, collect monster materials, use those materials to upgrade your ranger, and then repeat. It's a very satisfying loop of progression, and continuously scaling the ladder to face off against newer and stronger behemoths is exciting and challenging. There's a link in the description that will take you where you need to go to start slaying behemoths. And by doing so, you have absolutely nothing to lose and you'll directly help support myself and this channel. Lastly, if you enjoyed the video, please comment and leave a like. It really does help with the success and searchability of videos. It helped me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Alright guys, that's about it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. May your hunts be plentiful.